Hello, this is Adam from 21st Century Workshop with a video on the sustainable development goals and why they are failing. If you're not interested in the sustainable development goals, please feel free to skip the video. But this video is really, really for the young people that I've been training for the last however many years. You know, whether I'm training young people at the UN or for an NGO, I've always tried to use the SDGs as my framework to guide their action. You know, it's 2019 and the SDGs are failing. We have Antonio Gutierrez on stage saying, you know, we need 10 years of action towards the SDGs. Greenhouse gas emissions are going up. Global temperatures are going up. Global hunger is apparently going up. This is a really complicated subject. It deserves, it demands far more than a five or 10 minute video from me. You know, I understand that. I also can see how different people uh, working for different organizations in different sectors can have different opinions and can experience the SDGs and global development in different ways. This is a sensitive topic. Now that I'm outside the UN system, I feel more free to talk openly. So what are the sustainable development goals? There's lots of explainer videos that will tell you exactly what every single goal is, every single target, every single indicator. I'm not gonna do that here. You know, I'll include some links in the description, but all you need to know is that in 2015, all the United Nations member states agreed on this SDG framework as a guide for their action towards 2030. It, covers a range of issues from hunger to poverty to inequality to urban development to water and sanitation it's a huge and comprehensive framework um, that came after the Millennium Development Goals before them. Now, according to a recent UN SCAT report tracking the progress of the SDGs in Asia Pacific, not one country is on course to achieve one SDG by 2030. Not one. There are some goals where we're making some progress. For example, SDG 4 for quality education, we're making some progress, but on the current trajectory, we will not make any of the target. Also, um, on some goals, for example, SDG 6 and SDG 8 and SDG 12, we're actually going backward. None of this is helped by the fact that we only have data to support one third of the SDG targets. So two thirds of the SDGs, we wouldn't even know if we were succeeding because a lot of the data doesn't exist or the data is not agreed upon. The data side is really, really complicated. You know, imagine trying to measure progress on so many targets and so many indicators, it's a nightmare. The SDGs to have any credibility in 2030, we need good data. So why are the SDGs failing? Well, part of it is to do with the SDGs themselves. The SDGs were created very much as a response to criticism of the Millennium Development Goals beforehand, meaning they were designed for developed and developing countries. The MDGs before them were just focused really on supporting developing countries. Developed countries were seen more like donors or partners, but the SDG framework is focused on everyone. Also, they addressed global inequality, the gap between rich and poor, which was groundbreaking. And the SDGs were created really inclusively. Young people, civil society, marginalized groups, government leaders, private sector. It was the most inclusive process in UN history, according to Ban Ki-moon. In many ways, creating such an all-encompassing framework made the SDGs the most ambitious project in the history of humankind. To be honest, it was a miracle that we even got agreement for the SDGs from all UN member states. You know, that in itself is a tremendous achievement. And, you know, this is when Barack Obama was still president of the United States. If we tried to get the SDGs over the line today, we'd most likely fail. So the SDGs were designed not just to meet the needs of every country, but also to be agreed upon by every country to get agreement you have to compromise and when you compromise a lot you can end up with quite a bloated framework it reminds me of that saying when you try to be everything to everyone you end up being nothing to no one it's just way too bloated it makes it really inaccessible and overly complicated but then others would say development is complicated and it does demand complicated solutions many private sector leaders have told me that actually it's very useful to have the sdg framework because it gives them an access point you know, how do we or how is our work 
um, contributing to the global development agenda, we can take the SDGs and we can find a way in. So in some ways having this huge all-encompassing framework is beneficial but in other ways it isn't. SDGs are not perfect you know some of the targets some of the indicators are written quite poorly for example sustainable development goal 4.7 education for sustainable development how do we measure education for sustainable development considering the way it's written it's almost designed to fail again the counter argument is choosing targets because it's the right thing to do not just because you can measure it is a virtuous thing in some ways the second reason I want to point out that the SDGs are failing is government inaction. Now, again, it depends on the country. Some countries are investing much, much more. But the reality is millions of young people are walking out of school to protest in the streets because they can see the governments aren't doing enough. It was a quote from Peter Gluckman speaking at a panel in Washington a few months ago where he said, the reality is that the goals are just seen as aspirational goals rather than an actual roadmap to change. Governments are just labeling what they're doing anyhow as in obligation towards the SDGs. I read another quote in the same article by Nakao Ishii, the chief executive of Global Environment Facility. She said, it's almost an order that when you go to these UN meetings or policy meetings, you have to wear the SDG badge. But the question is, to what extent do they really understand the need for transformation? We need more investment in the global goals from countries. It's as simple as that. That brings me to the next issue, which is a really sensitive one. Can you have sustainability and economic growth? When Greta Thunberg criticizes world leaders for their fairy tales of continuous economic growth, whilst sitting underneath a sign for the sustainable development goals, it kind of makes me laugh and cry at the same time because if you wanna change capitalism, if you wanna move away from economic growth, the SDGs are not your agenda. They're not your framework. Economic growth are a cornerstone of the SDGs. And of course they are, otherwise countries wouldn't have agreed to them. Gupta and Vegelin, again, all links in the description, call out the SDGs, that the SDGs run the risk of not driving the transformation that we need to create a sustainable planet with economic growth as its cornerstone. This is a common argument from civil society activists and left-wing observers that to really bring about sustainable development, we need to overcome capitalism. You can see, if you look at sustainable development goal 17, the implementation of the SDGs is the old neoliberal approach, which is trade liberalization, privatization, the role of the World Trade Organization, the IMF and the World Bank, structural adjustment loans. It's there in black and white. These organizations have been criticized again and again and again for failing poor people. So for many people, the SDGs could serve to reproduce poverty and inequality not solve it. Many would say that it's access to fundamental human rights like food, water and healthcare that are what will resolve poverty and inequality, not access to markets. The only entitlements uh, prescribed in the SDGs are universal access to primary and secondary education in SDG 4 for quality education. There is no prescribed entitlements to food, water and health in the SDGs. I personally think there is a place for organizations like the IMF and the World Bank, but we need more bottom-up innovation. We need more investment in civil society, local ideas and solutions and innovation. We need more examples of positive deviance, for example, which identifies solutions that are working in poor communities and aims to replicate and scale those solutions. More sustainable, more affordable, more acceptable to local people and local cultures. And then lastly, the UN itself. Now, the UN is there to support member states to achieve this agenda. I have my own experience of working at the UN and I know a lot of people who work inside uh, the UN across multiple agencies working on multiple issues. And I think we do have some challenges on the inside. First of all, money. The UN is in a cash crunch all the time, especially since Donald Trump became president of the United States. A lot of UN agencies are not getting the funding that they need. You know, the, the agendas that they are tackling are enormous in scale and scope and ambition, and the funding the UN has to achieve them is minimal. That's not to say that the UN isn't well endowed. 
it's a big sprawling bureaucracy they do have a lot of money but that money is going down and what that leads to is reliance from some agencies on member states to pay their membership fees for the agency to stay alive when you're reliant on member states for your funding uh, you are much less likely to take a risk to push back don't piss off your donors basically member states use this as a political football to get what they want at the un the sdgs are not a perfect agenda and it's important to understand that but at the same time it's important to have them the challenges that we're facing are global and we need global solutions to those challenges so i believe in the importance of the sdgs because i think that multilateralism is needed now more than ever we need frameworks that encourage countries and different stakeholders in society to collaborate the last thing we need is less multilateralism we need more of it particularly as certain world leaders are more inclined to build walls than build bridges i was hesitant to make this video because it's a complicated topic and it certainly deserves more than a five or ten minute video from me i implore you to check out some of the resources that I've included in the comments. So what do you think about it? Please comment below, let me know. If you wanna watch another video, you can click this. If you wanna to subscribe to 21st Century Workshop, click this. And of course, learn for life, my friends.